Hello, Oliver here. Um, I'm presenting another vlog. This is vlog number 14. Of course, as you know, we have been involved with the series, The Jesus You Never Knew. We have come to the conclusion of that and now we are switching on to a new uh, series of vlogs. And this will be six vlogs that I will present under the title, Living with People from Another Culture. This is critically important to me because I believe as, a, as an immigrant in this country, I believe that uh, I can speak to some of the challenges of culture. The challenges of uh, more or less of understanding culture and understanding other people. If we are to be a community of faith, as God intends us to be, I think it's critical that we be not a, a, a monogenous whole, but we will be heterogeneous in the sense that um, uh, what we have is uh, an involvement with different cultures as God uh, has intended it to be. So what is culture? Um, that's the title of this blog. What is culture? The first and the most basic definition of culture that pops into people's heads often refers to a geographic location, the culture of a tribe, the culture of a city, uh, the West Coast, the East Coast, the British as all of these are possible ways of grouping people into a culture. With this approach, it's possible to take a bigger macro view the Asian culture, the African culture, the Western or Eastern culture, or a more precise, or what we will call a micro view, uh, Greenwich Village or Manhattan culture or Louisiana culture, or the culture of your own in-laws. Hello. This approach is a good start for defining culture, but culture is certainly based on something more than a geographic place. Turning to a dictionary definition, we might read that culture is, quote, the totality of socially transmitted behavioral patterns, arts, beliefs, institutions, and all other products of human work and thought. Unquote. Or further, quote, these patterns, traits, and products considered as the expression of a particular period, class, community, or population. Edwardian culture, Japanese culture, the culture of poverty, unquote. Culture is the relatively stable set of inner values and beliefs generally held by groups of people in countries or regions and the noticeable impact those values and beliefs have on people's outward behaviors and environment. So the, we, we have been besieged by cultural, what we call cultural analogies. Analogies. Culture is like, you know, fill in the blanks. If I ask you to draw um, a model for culture on a, a sheet of paper, what would you draw? What comes to mind? Culture has been described as a rose, a hot dog, a spider web, a pizza, <laughs> a toilet, clouds, a wheat field, a bathtub, a circus, a dog complete with fleas and all, and so on. Other common analogies that Americans seem to like, and they are more appealing than the toilet, represent culture as a melting pot, a salad bowl, tapestry, or a mosaic. A tree is another way to describe culture. 
trees are formed over many years <laughs> by the constant slow impact of their environment wind rain sunlight nutrients just as people are slowly formed by family diet environment education trees change from year to year yet yeah, that, that, that's the truth uh, dropping their leaves losing branches growing new ones but they remain essentially the same tree over time cultures and individuals may also adapt adopt ever-changing popular trends but somehow they remain essentially the same over time an iceberg is what I would like to use as a metaphor to describe culture an important first distinction to make when examining culture therefore is between the part you see the tip of the iceberg or above the waterline culture and the part you don't see the bottom of the iceberg under the water culture the tip of the iceberg can be interesting but just as approximately 80% of an iceberg's mass is underwater, perhaps 80% of the important aspects of one's culture are also contained in the invisible and usually unconscious characteristics of culture. First, the bottom of the iceberg is the foundation for what you see at the top. If you understand the underlying causes of why people behave the way they do, you will, you are a little more likely to be able to uh, anticipate how they act or react in a variety of situations. The second reason for the importance of the lower or fifths of the iceberg is that these principles applies to apply to all cultures <laughs> you, you, you when you study and try to memorize a long list of facts and figures and tip of the iceberg information about Italy for instance you can't apply the information on your business trip to Germany it's a different let me I'll give you a test of your knowledge and I want to uh, throw out some proverbs uh, maybe to uh, to prod your thinking in this let me give you uh, 10 proverbs and in the next vlog I will give you uh, the answer to these could you guess where these proverbs came from number one you got eyes to see and wisdom not to see. What does that mean? Where does it come from? Number two, muddy roads call the milepost a liar. Number three, every bell ain't a dinner bell. Where did that come from? Number four, a mule can tote so much goodness in his face that he don't have none left for his hind legs. Number five, and these are cultural proverbs. Number five, the graveyard is the cheapest boarding house. Think on that. Number six, a crow, crow, does fly high but when he comes low the ants does eat out his eyes hello number seven if you go to a town and find a chief sitting on the ground do not ask for a stool number eight when the Nile 
knows a secret, the desert will soon, soon know it too. Number nine, if you want to eat roast plantain, be ready to burn your fingers. And number 10, the insect that bites has no one to come to its aid when it's in trouble. These are just some cultural proverbs. Let me take this opportunity to remind you that I'll be teaching a course at the Epps School of Ministry starting on March 15th through April 21st. And uh, there will be eight sessions and I, I think you will enjoy it. And you can go to Epps School of Ministry and register. The course is only $100 and it's, it's well worth the value. And then of course at my local church, the missionary Community Missionary Baptist Church, we will be doing a, a seminar or workshop on March 19th at the Cedar Hill campus um, entitled My Neighbor Next Door. So this has been vlog number 14. I trust that you will be geared up to uh, deal with this whole idea of culture. God has created culture. God has created us all to be a part of different cultures. And these blogs, these blogs the next six, six blogs, I think will be critical in helping us to understand different peoples from different cultures as God has created. God bless you and see you on Sunday.